God's beauty is all around us and my goal as an artist is to capture and interpret that beauty on canvas and to take you, the viewer, along with me on this painting journey. Hello and welcome to Painting Journeys. My name is Kitty Lynn Klisch and once again we're going to journey across the canvas. Um, I'm going to take you to the west. I think Wyoming, yeah, the Grand Tetons. How does that sound? But first of all, I want to show you what we did on our last show. Um, I had visited the Green Bay Botanical Gardens in Green Bay and a red, brilliant red uh, tree peony caught my eye and I decided to just make it the star of the, of the show, the star of the painting last last uh, segment. So I hope you did catch that. This is how it turned out when I took it back to my home studio and did a few little finishing touches on it and little darks here, a few lights and in uh, some of the places on the leaves especially and framed up of course it always looks really nice. So that was the tree peony from the Green Bay Botanical Gardens. And now um, today what we're going to be doing is when I traveled to, Wy to Wyoming, to the, to the Grand Tetons, um, I was, oh, I was on a, I, I had actually gone to Yellowstone first, but, um, and we're going to visit Yellowstone on our next segment. But anyway, I took a little bus tour, and the bus took me down, a little coach, 15 of us, I think it was, and it took us down through, um, Wyoming and all through the, the Grand Teton National Park. And when um, I was going by, I saw this picture and I thought, oh my gosh, it is so desolated and so um, foreshadowed by these huge mountains that are up above it. And I thought, I, I want to paint that. I want to paint that. I want to. I want to. I want to bring that to life. Now, and as you can see in the photograph, the colors are not very good back in here. So, and I'm not really crazy about this pale sky. So, I'm going to act like a true painter, and I'm going to put some paint on and get some color in there. And I'm also doing something else a little different today. I am using bristle br brushes instead of the fine sable ones that I usually use. And the reason is that I want to get just a little more of a painterly feel for this particular piece. When you, when you travel to the, to the west, it's a whole different atmosphere. It's a whole different feeling out there. It is not... Um, it just makes you want to paint it in a looser, rougher um, style than what you ordinarily do. So that's what, that's what I'm going to try to do. And like I always say, 50-50 chance, 50% chance of a mess or a masterpiece. So we'll go for it, okay? I'm glad you're with me today. I'm really, truly, truly glad you've joined. And... I'm hoping that as we travel across this canvas, that this will be an enjoyable journey for you and a successful one for me in that I am able to bring all the things that I have in my mind and in my heart uh, to fruition on my canvas. Okay? Now I think I want this a little more violet. I'm working with a rather limited palette today also, and that's not something that I normally do. Um, I usually have more colors on my palette, but I'm, I'm trying very hard to um, tighten up a little bit. Tighten up in some areas and loosen up in others. I want, I want some color back there in that 
um, in that sky behind those mountains. And so I'm just right now, bear with me please as I'm mixing up some different colors here that I would like to see in the sky. And let me see. It's a lovely trip going through the, I think we were on Highway 89 coming down and the scenery just kept changing and changing. And you'd see long, flat areas of like, almost like what you would imagine high desert would be. And, and then you'd go through very forested areas. And of course there was the lake, Jenny Lake. That was a very pretty place. Very, very pretty. Um, and you just, we traveled down. We actually went through three states. We started out in Idaho and went through the bottom part of Montana and then down on into Wyoming where the Tetons are. So that was a, a lot of, of um, traveling when you think about it, three states in one day. Um, I'm gonna be with you in just a second here. I'm getting it, I'm getting it just how I want it. You know, normally I say that the most important part of a painting is the composition. Well, as you can see, I have the composition on here. And it, that was very easy to do, of course, because the composition is already laid out for me in the photograph. Now the artistic part comes in putting in color to bring it to life. Okay. So let's see here how we're going to do this. I want a little bit of, um, of blue. Oh, I'm sorry about that knocking sound. I can't. I'm going to go in with a little bit of a lighter color in here. It was just a bit too dark. Tighten this up a little bit. You know, you always think you're really ready to go, but there, that worked, it helped. Good. That's always encouraging when something works. Alrighty. And then we're gonna go over here and we're gonna go a little faster here. I just wanna get this mast in because I have a lot of detail on this painting and I, I don't want to get waylaid with, with um, you know, making the sky perfect. I just want to block it in and then I'll come back and alrighty. Now I'm going to take my paper towel and I'm going to wipe some of that off. And there we go. I'll just throw that over there. Messy, messy girl. All right, let's see here. Let's get a little pink in here. Perhaps a little bit of orangish or reddish. There we go. And I know you don't see that in the picture, 
But like I said, I want to put color in this. I want to make this sing. I don't want this to be all blue. Now I'll come back with my blue brush and I'll soften that a little bit so it doesn't look so garish. And now with those mountains in front of that, that'll look really nice, I think, anyway. Yeah, there. So who knows what's going on back there? It could be the sunrise, could be the sunset, could be a reflection of something happening on the other side of the mountains. Who knows? We don't care. Our goal is to just give us a nice painting that has some oomph to it. There. I like that. Okay, now these mountains are really dark. And when you see them in person, um, I'm going to talk to you about that now a little bit. You know, I have a photograph here of, the, of a closer view of the Tetons. And they are very dark, almost like it's, they're almost like a slate gray. And there's usually snow on them all somewhere in little pieces, little places. There's usually snow um, on them year round. They're, they're so tall, they, uh, the altitude is so high, the snow never seems to really completely melt. So they are very dark. And I have to stay true to that, but I will put highlights on them to try to uh, show you form, the form. The, mar the mountains themselves are, are um, stark, and um, they, look, they look almost like um, they... They're forbidding looking. I would never want to go hiking on them. There's just something about them that looks very uh, forbidding. Let's see here. Get this a little light. Maybe we'll have just a little bit of blue in here. And as you can see now, there again, I'm trying to work uh, fast. My goal is to get this canvas covered for you today. I want to get it covered so that you can at least see where I'm going. I don't think this little top there is quite high enough. There we go. Okay, and then like this right in here, this, you probably can't see that, but there's dark spots coming right in there. There's one coming right down here. It's a little darker. And then this is a little darker on this side here. Okay, and now then we are up on this one here. He has kind of a bump, and then as I follow him around, and I'm not sure if those are trees up there or not. I, I believe that there is a line where the trees won't grow any higher um, when it comes to really tall mountains. So don't think those are trees trees up there. I think they're just little rock outcroppings. All right. And I do see ever so lightly a little bit of snow in some of the places here. So I'll put just a little, a little snow coming right in here. 
and you see it's it's not it's not really white uh, it's just kind of a, a lighter a lighter gray um, this has a little softer look I've got to soften up those edges as I come down okay and you know that um, photo that I, um, I showed you of the of the um, Tetons, you can see that they're they're quite intimidating. At least I felt that they were. Okay, now I'm seeing a little bit of a kind of a rusty look down in here. It's coming up from the bottom. All right. And a little more of that it is coming right in here. And it's even a little lighter. It's almost a little like a pinkish look right there. And darker behind it. There, okay, and then we'll take a clean brush and put some of that snow on there in a couple spots. Let's see, we've got some right in here, in there, coming down there a little bit. There's some in here, and there, okay. All right, now this is, this is softer right in here, and then it goes up, and it gets darker. It's getting darker, and there's some outcroppings right in here. And, and this one has got some funny shapes going on to it. They're so, um, Unusual. I don't know if there's any place in the United States that has mountains that look like these. It's amazing. And what is really amazing is the fact that somebody would actually, you know, be able to live out there because down in this area here, it's almost desert like high desert with these big mountains in the background and you think, my gosh, how could somebody make a living? I mean, what did they, what did they do? What did they, there, it's all forsaken now, abandoned, but at one time or another, families thrived there and lived there. What did they do? They, they must have had cattle, of course, and did a little farming and ranching, but I mean, I, you know, to think of people having the fortitude to sustain themselves in this type of, of um, environment is just amazing to me that they could do that. Got a little bit more of that light down in here on this one here too. A little bit of green in this. I think I've seen a little bit of green down in here. Yep, there we go. And this is lighter over here. This comes down quite dark under here. Hmm. 
I guess I'm getting the feel that I wanted with these brushes. They're kind of scratchy uh, to me, but I think I'm getting the feel. There we go. Okay. Now we have, and I'm, I really am sorry, but I don't know the names. I was reading an article on this, and I don't, re I don't remember the names of these different areas that layer, that come forward from the actual mountains to the, what I would call foothills, you know, I don't know, I, I know that each part of it, the mountain range has a um, scientific name, but I don't know what it is. I usually don't know the names of things that I paint. I'm not, I'm not gifted with, in, uh, you know, a, a scientific type mind where I remember those sort of things. I just remember how it made me feel when I saw it. That is the, my greatest reminder of where I've been, is how did it make me feel? What emotions did it um, uh, uh, make me? <laughs> arise in me because of what I was looking at. Okay. Alrighty, let's see here. Okay, now this down in here, that's got a little more green in it, and it's green going down in here, and I'm going to change brush, and go to a brown brush, make up some brown with my green and my red. I love the nice burnt sienna look I can get by mixing equal parts of sap green and cad red light but i need to gray it so i better add a little bit of the blue um gray it down a little bit because that's quite a ways away it's not like it's something that we're seeing up close so we we have to keep it you know distance so that it stays far away it needs a little more red okay there we go all right here we go and here and then this is coming down here, and then I see where it's getting even a little bit lighter. In here, it's getting a little bit lighter, and goes that goes up there. And then this is kind of coming down here. Maybe that's too dark. Let's see here. Let's take some blue and put over it. Lighten that up a little bit. There we go, that's better. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of coming down. And then this is, this is coming like so. And then we have this, this light thing right there. And then the mountain is coming this way. And then get the dark brush and go back into the dark. And right in here we have a, looks like a kind of a little outcropping. It's, comes like this and goes like that. And then there we have some green, dark green, darker green, much darker right in here. Okay, and put a little more dark green in here too. All right, and then we have some green patches. So this, we'll add a little blue to the green and they're coming down in here and down in here. And right up in here. Now, I, I do believe that those look like little groups of trees. But right now, I'm just looking for shape. I want to just put the, the, the shape on 
and not worry about the, um, give you the impression of trees, but not worry about making individual trees, going for the larger shapes. Okay. Over here, we have a little, a little brighter green. Right in this area, right in here. And then that's coming down into here. And then it goes darker. I hope you can follow along with me as I'm sort of talking my way through this. At the um, end of the day, well, it wasn't really the end of the day. I guess it was pretty close to lunchtime anyway. We had made it to um, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And what an enchanting little western town that is. Uh, you just, you wouldn't believe all of the the uh, how how Western I mean it's just like something right out of a movie. It is just uh, so really really um, unique and unusual compared to to what we our uh, towns look like here. And there was all these places selling saddles and and boots and you know, all kinds of things that the cowboys would use, you know. They have a, a park there, city park. I've never seen anything like this in my life. The whole, the entranceway to the park, each entranceway was made with an arch, a huge arch. Uh, I'm showing you the picture. Now, it's a huge arch of elk antlers and they, that they have woven into these arches that are so huge that people can walk right through them. And it's, it's just amazing. It, it, it's just, it's really amazing. And then in the center of the, of the park is this is this um, statue, of, and I, his name, I don't remember his name, um, but kind of escapes me. But anyway, I, get, I think he was one of the founders of the town. But this statue was just gorgeous, bronze, and it had to be this, you know, like maybe uh, two people high. I mean, it was just huge and beautiful. And they had some other statues around town, but that one was my favorite. So that's why I wanted to show that one um, to you. There we go. All right, I don't know. Looks like mountains to me. <laughs> okay. Right now then, and this is trees, so let's get those strokes going in a different direction so that we can have trees on there. Now we have some of this beautiful green, that light green that we made. We have some more of that over in here on this hill. And I cannot believe it. My very handsome young cameraman just gave me the 30 minute signal, meaning that we're halfway through the show already. And I can't believe that, but then I guess, well, I'm almost halfway through the picture, so maybe I'm not too far behind. <laughs> yeah, so I, I get so wrapped up in gabbing with you and painting and 
thinking everything, then I lose all track of time. So they have to watch me. So they give me these little signals. And, uh, and I have been known not to see them, too. So sometimes the poor guy is standing there with his little sign that says 30 minutes for a long time before I even notice. But, oh well. I have a really good crew of guys here that work with me. Or that I work with, however you want to put it. Okay, maybe a little later. Right in here. I'm going to take a smaller brush and I'm going to take some really dark, make a really dark blackish green and make some little trees in here. We see them everywhere and now there again now see I'm falling into the detail. And, you know, that is a trap that a lot of artists will fall into. They see that detail and they want to do the detail instead of working on those big shapes and getting their canvas covered. But I, I want to give you something that is going to look a little um, like it's going to look before we leave. So. I'm going to go ahead and break the rules because rules were meant to be broken. That's why we have them, isn't it? So that we can break them? I hope so. I do all the time. All right. Um, okay, now we have this very dark mountain that is, or foothill, that is covered with a lot of of uh, trees. It's a pretty dark mass. I can't make it too dark because I want it to to show up um, a little lighter because of the all the light that I have behind it there. So I'm just going to come in here and just go and hopefully these will look like trees to you. That will look like a and it gets darker as it goes down because we have the light against the dark. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now I'll be putting some lights on there and that'll make those look um, a little more like trees, put some darks in between. There we go. Now these trees that are sticking up here, I'll have to take my wipeout tool and wipe those out so that I can get them back on there. <clears throat> Working fast now because I want to get this covered. Still in with a dark green, trying to create a look of trees behind here, multiple trees growing. You know. odd thing about this was, and I wonder, I wonder if this was like um, a place where uh, ranchers would go out and stay 
when it was in use because there was no house, no house, no barns, no other, uh, excuse me, sign of civilization at all except for this one lone little, you know, and it could have been, it could have been a place where horses were kept. It could have been a place where people stayed inside. And that was, that was, um, that was it. And, and that's so surprising. I mean, so the only thing I can think of is that the house must have been behind a hill or something, and, or the ranch. And this, when they went out and rode, because I, you know, they had some of those ranchers out there, they have thousands and thousands of acres of land. It's just amazing how much land they own, and it's all open and undeveloped, and they've just put a big fence around it and and uh, made it um, so that they can let their cattle go out and graze, you know. And even at that, how do you take care of the cattle? You know, I mean, what a life! I can't, I can't imagine living that kind of life. I would never have made a good farmer's wife or a good rancher's wife. I'm just a softy, what can I say? I'd have never been able to slaughter the animals, and I know that's a necessary thing, but I don't even care that much for hunting. I know some people love it, but, and I'm probably making a lot of enemies right now, but as you know, you do what you want to do and I do what I want to do. I'm, I'm, I, I believe in hunting as long as it's for, for a reason. It's the trophy hunting that bothers me, just to kill an animal for because you want its head on your wall. I think that's really sad to take that life. All right, it seems to be coming along pretty good. Okay, so now then down here we have a lot of, of um, still more green, but it's mixed now uh, and it's a little redder and in some places, and a little greener. It's more of a grayed green. It's not a bright green like we see here in Wisconsin. That's for sure. Everything out there is a, a kind of a, has kind of an orangey reddish cast to it. So now I'm going to come behind here and I'm going to create these, these trees that are in the foreground. Whoops, it needs to be lighter, kitty. Create these trees in the foreground here, and there they go. It could be a little bit greener. Let's see here. Maybe we'll try a nice different shade of green, a little cooler green in there. See if we can get some variation going here. There we go. All right, and then this here. There's darks in there, and over in here, we have some tr some bushes that are really rather um, purple, rather violet colored mixed in with the green. That's real pretty. Anyway, while we were in in uh, Jackson Hall, this um, I'm walking along and uh, looking at all the sites. I must have looked like a real, true city slicker. I, you know, was pretty amazed by it all. And um, so this fellow comes along, and he's got a state like a stagecoach. I'm going to show you a picture of that, too. He was kind of cute, and he thought I was kind of cute. And so he was flirting. 
and that was kind of fun. <laughs> but I, no matter how much he flirted with me, I did not get on his, in his stagecoach. I did not go for the okie doke. But they do, they ride up and down the streets hoping to get people to take rides on the stagecoach. You know, like I said, it's a, a tourist -y type place, but it's fascinating at the same time. You gotta calm that purple down a little bit. That's a little bit too much. Okay, now it's all yellow greens coming in. And, and I think probably the most frightening, one of the most frightening things that ever happened to me happened to me on that trip. The driver of our bus was a very... Um, he was an elderly gentleman, very kind, very knowledgeable about the area. And as we're driving back, he would stop at, at scenic overlooks, you know, places, picture op opportunities. In fact, that's how I got all my pictures. And um, so he stopped at this one place overlooking this big gully that must have been at least um, 150, 200 feet down. And it was a, there was a river below. And he was telling everybody this is where a lot of people really like to take photographs. And we all got off of the bus and we're all standing there taking photographs. And the gravel on the side of the road was very loose. And I just stepped, there was somebody in front of me, and I just stepped a little bit to the right onto this gravel. And it was so dry, and it was such a drop off that I swung around, and my foot slipped, and I swung around and I was going over the side of this canyon, okay, head first on my back. And the other people that were taking pictures, they were, you know, screaming and trying to help me. And they, just before I went completely over, they grabbed me by my ankles. And I'm, I'm not kidding, it was like this. And I was going fast, you know, I thought this is it. I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom into the waterfall on my head, you know. And, but these people grabbed me and like two, three people, cause I mean, can you imagine pulling somebody my size up like that? And so anyway, they grabbed me and they pulled me up. And I was really scraped up pretty badly, but I, and I, I, you know, the breath was taken out of me. I was, I was frightened. I was very, very scared. Um, it was, you know, it was something I'll never forget. And a lesson, big lesson. So anyway, enough of that, enough of my adventure. I do have my adventures when I go places. I don't know how it always happens, but I do have my adventures. Well, let me see here. So needless to say, there was a nurse along, and so she dressed my wounds, and they gave me some water to drink and babied me all the way back on the trip. So everybody was very kind, and I just, 
I was so grateful to them that they were that they <laughs> that they cared, you know, that they were watching, that they saw what happened, and that they reacted like they did because it was so scary. And I did not go very close to the edge the rest of that trip, even when we were in, in Yellowstone. You know, you just you, you forget you forget that you're out of your element. Okay, I think this is looking, this is looking okay, I think. And some bright yellow on the tops of these, right in here, to show that they're coming down in here. Dancing around this little cabin, I better not put it off any longer. Um, I just got the high sign that I'm... I only have another 15 minutes, so let's get that in there. Okay. Now I know it's a little redder than this. And, but I'm going to add that when I add the, the look of the, of the boards and, and, and everything, so. There we go. I'm hurrying fast now. I'm, I I uh, don't want to waste any more time here. I want to get this canvas covered. You think I can do it? Huh? I think I can do it. I think I can do it. I will do it. I will get this canvas covered. The show won't go over. I have to get this canvas covered. Alrighty, and then we've got some bright yellow green in the back, right in here where this window is, and there's a little light in here, and there's a little board going across there. Okay, that's good enough. And we'll make some little tree tops in here, make it look a little more. Okay, now then this right in here, that's quite dark there. Um, I think right here we've got a nice dark bottom for this tree right here. We're going to lay that in. And then we're going to lay this in on top.
And then we'll have to make some branches and stuff in there. Alrighty, let's see here. I don't know if I've had the 10 minute or not. Have I had the 10 minute? Okay, thank you. <laughs> We're really counting it down now. Okay. And then we have a really kind of a dried um, you can tell I'm going like crazy now. <laughs> okay. We have some really dark trees coming out of here. Hmm, I don't think that's gonna work. You know what? We're just maybe gonna have to leave these dark trees out of our painting. I don't think they're gonna work. Maybe we'll have to make them lighter. There, that works better. Okay. And I want a little more of a yellow green in the foreground here. Okay, and then we had um, some little fence posts. All right, and so there was one here and here. Whoops, too wide. There. And here and here, okay? And we'll go here and here and then there, there, and there, okay? And then we'll put a um, little bit of sagebrush or whatever that is against the house right in here. Whoops. Oh, no, not that big gob. Okay, and we'll put some little sagebrush things in here. And maybe there's some more over in here. Well, I think I have certainly captured my intent of adding color to the scene. We have some really bright yellow green right down in here. 
It's probably some sort of sagebrush or something. Okay, and then maybe right in here, and then this right behind the house looks like it needs to be a little darker. Right back in there. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, and these edges aren't looking too good, but that's okay. And maybe I'll take just a little swipe of the, the green and put it across here like so. And all right, maybe we'll take a little bit here of, I want to just thin that down a little bit. That doesn't look very nice like that. Okay, and maybe I'm going to just take a little tiny bit of this and just kind of try to dance it around here to make this tree look just a little more alive. Okay, and in here too. Okay, right in here. A little bit, a little bit down in here more, and a little bit over in here. Okay. All right, I think that I better call it a day because they're all making signals at me that I need to stop and I don't want to. I'm having way too much fun. <laughs> well, there it is, um, my journey to the Grand Tetons with a little lost um, building. I mean, I'm not sure what I'm going to name it, you know, overshadowed, still waiting, half gone, whatever. I'll think of something. Listen, thank you so much for joining me on Painting Journeys. And until we meet again, um, goodbye and uh, take care. This is Kitty Lynn Klisch with Painting Journeys. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.